Um, I am Craig Jackson. I can get over there and make that face if you'd like. Um, before we get started, I just want to tell you one thing. I know your time is valuable here. If we get started with this, and this is not your cup of tea, if you're sitting on the front row, get up and go to another session. You're here to learn, not to, not to just sit around and be bored. So seriously, if, if this is not what, you, what you're looking for, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Plus, we're videoing this, and it will be available online after the conference, so you can come back and look at it. So, with that said, how many of you are using Canvas in here as your learning management system? Okay. How many of you are using the cloud in addition to Canvas? How many of you are storing stuff, pulling stuff? Sharing stuff, a few. Okay, let me get this going again. There we go. The title of this presentation is Google Drive, Dropbox, and Box Using Cloud Storage to Maximize Your Online Presence. Now what we're gonna do with this session is I'm going to take you through a few, few slides about using cloud storage, a little bit about Google Drive in case you're not familiar with it, Dropbox and Box.net. Also a little bit about SkyDrive, but not a lot. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can utilize this in your courses with Canvas to make it easier to move things around and edit things if you know in Canvas you are creating your content pages, you have to go in and edit things, and once you do that, it's still there, even though it's not supposed to be there, even though you delete it. So what we'll do is go through that. Now, I'm not going to read a lot of this because, well, y'all can read. I know I should have put pictures up here, but that's for next time. Why you want to use the cloud? It's free. How many of you have unlimited budgets? Nobody? Amazing. Free is good. Easy access, no matter where you are, there it is. Cell phone, tablet, laptop, desktop, Summit, Meridian, Decatur, anywhere in the world you can access your content. It doesn't matter what, what operating system, it's all there. The big thing about it, Creating and editing content. How many of you have Microsoft Office as your word processor of choice at work? Okay, one or two. How many of you have the same version of Microsoft <coughs> Office on your computer at home? When they upgrade to a new version, how many of you upgrade to the new version? The hands just keep getting smaller and smaller here. If you were living on Pluto, would you get the latest update? See, I knew I'd catch y'all with that one. Okay, the great thing about these cloud sites, you can create your documents, and they are compatible with Microsoft Office. So you don't have to have necessarily the same version all the way around, especially with your college students, the students that you're teaching. They may not have the latest version of Word or PowerPoint or something, okay? Cross-platform, we talked about that, and we'll look at this a little bit later on. We're going to take a look, and I'm going to let you look at a site where we've got things and see how well it works. Mobile compatible. You can access this stuff on your cell phone, on a tablet. I would not recommend trying to create a document or doing serious editing work on that because, I don't know, maybe your fingers are quicker than mine, but. It just doesn't work. Can anybody else think of a reason to use the cloud? Availability, good. Sharing, who said that? Raise your hand, stand up. Say sharing, see, okay. I, I tell you what. You get a prize, okay? I can get it back there. I can make it, okay? Very good, those are good answers. There, there are a lot of more reasons that you can think of on the fly when you need to, to use the cloud. 
Now, quickly, this is a list of services that are available, but is by no means the total list. These are the top four. Google, SkyDrive. SkyDrive is Microsoft's offering. Pardon me? Which just changed to OneDrive? Yes, it did. What's your name? Sylvia. Sylvia. Oh, yay, thanks. <laughs> there we go. I couldn't, I couldn't wind up and go to her. I, that's right, OneDrive. There are different things about each one of these, primarily the storage capacity. Google Drive, on the free version that you can get just as a regular citizen, is 15 gigs. If your school goes through and has the Google Apps, you get 30 gigs free. Dropbox starts out at about 2 gigs, and you can work up to about 5 to 8 gigs by referring people. If you refer me, you will not get that storage capacity because I will not respond to you. Box.com. I started using them about three years ago. Currently, they're going to give you 10 gigs of storage free. And then you've got pay versions you can get. And then SkyDrive, Microsoft's offering, which is OneDrive, gives you 7 gigs for free, and then you can refer people and make enemies and get a few more extra, extra gigs. All of these do have premium versions that you can pay $20 a month and get more storage. But, as we will see in a moment, that's not necessarily what you have to do. Any questions on these? Man, we got a chair up here if you'd like to come sit with us. Okay. I just don't want you to have to stand up the whole time. Okay. How are we going to use this in our courses? And not just in courses. If you are workforce individuals, you need to be able to access PDF documents showing what kind of, of course offerings you have. Or you may need a form that you need to send to somebody. You don't have that much room on your cell phone a lot of times to, sell, to save PDFs and different things. All you got to do is store it right here. Sharing course content with other teachers. How many of you in your Canvas course have put other teachers in so they can share your content? Doesn't work real well, does it? What's your name? Dawn. Dawn? Why doesn't it work well? There you go. In K-12 especially, FERPA, very serious stuff. We've had courses in the past where we'd have 20 people enrolled in a course, three of them were students, and 17 of them were teachers. The problem you have with Canvas is that you can't just move this over. You have to copy it and paste it in your own content. Not really good. So you can share your course content very easily on Drive or Dropbox or Box. Storing media files. How many of you ran into problems because you're trying to upload a video and your course does not have enough room? Has that ever happened to anybody? I know it has because y'all call me. I'm tech support. I'm system administrator for MDE K-12 Canvas at the RCU. I've gotten those calls. Wasn't from Dawn, but I've gotten them. Creating and editing multiple document formats. Why get hung up on just doing something that can be used in Microsoft Word or the Microsoft products? Google has their own version of documents. They've got Docs, Sheets, which is the spreadsheet. And they've got Slides, which is their PowerPoint, which, by the way, this is done with. You can also use all this stuff in the actual Canvas course. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a little bit. Any questions? And if you have questions, please stop me. This is for you, so if we're not going in the direction we need to, to steer me. Let's talk about some of the different things. Google Drive, 15 gigs. That's free. 30 gigs if you are with a school. What's that you say, Wayne? 15 gigs isn't enough and your school's not going to do it? Okay. What you do is you can have multiple Gmail accounts and multiple Google Drive accounts. Currently, I have 10 different Google Drive accounts. 
Because, I mean, I've got, okay, I've got one for my tech support. I've got one for the courses that I teach. I've got a personal one. I've got one for my baseball pictures that I put up. So, I mean, it, you separate it. Very easy. Images. How many of you like to store images online? You run out of space, don't you? Because most places, no matter how, size, how big the picture is, it takes that size into, into consideration when looking at your quota. With Google Drive, if the resolution is less than 2,000 by 2,000, it gets in free. There's no count against your quota, which is always good. You can upload or create and then edit documents from Word, be a text file. You can convert it then to a Microsoft Word, a PDF, a rich text format, whatever. You can edit it online. You can download it and edit it, put it back up. Tracks all the versions, okay? You can also do the same thing with spreadsheets and presentations. Has anybody used Google Drive to do this? Or are you just using it to store something? We do what? We just use it to store? What is your name? Michelle, Michelle, where are you from? Northeast. Northeast. Okay. Been there before. The comment was, and I'm repeating the comment for the video, because all they heard was, Charlie Graham's teacher, that's all. The comment was at Northeast, they are using Google Drive to do their uh, curriculum, look at all their documents, the course offerings, and let people make corrections. Do you use the comments feature on that? Okay. 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 Now, do you have the Google Apps, or are you just using an individual Google Drive account? A lady after my own heart. Good for you. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Any questions on Google Drive right now? Dropbox. This is another one I use, I've been using for several years. It's okay. The storage capacity is not up to what I would like. Two to five gigs just really doesn't give you a lot of stuff. You can upload and share your documents. They have a public server that if you are trying to test out a website, if you are building a website, you can actually upload that folder into their public folder and it will serve it up like a web server would. It's actually going to read the HTML file versus just throwing up a bunch of code on the screen. That's really cool. I've got, I've got some baseball pictures, some slideshows that I put up, that I put up in the Dropbox because it's Flash, and Google Drive does not process Flash at this point. You can link to it, but it will not actually process it like Dropbox will. Dropbox and Google and Box as well all have an a desktop uploader and sync application where you can just save your documents into that folder and it automatically syncs it with the cloud. Anything you sync with the cloud is automatically brought back down to your laptop or desktop at the same time. So you don't have to worry about, did I put this here or there? You just save it. And it's automatically done. If you make changes, it's automatic. Yes, sir. No, sir, you do not. You do not have to use Telnet or FTP to publish an HTML file in Dropbox. And I'll show you how to do that if you like. It's, it's, it's a good question. Any other questions? Okay, this, this is the audience participation part of the show here, folks. Box.net. You can have 50 gigs of storage for free. Okay? Again, you have to go in and refer people and do things, but it's still free. 
You can upload, create, and edit multiple document formats, including Microsoft and Google formats, okay? So you can do a little bit more with Box than you can with Google Drive, but then it has some drawbacks too. They all, no one is perfect, okay? If you want perfect, talk to Bill Gates and see if he can screw something up for you. Because the, the, no, there's no, it's like picking out a car. No one car is gonna have all the options you want. You're just gonna have to pick which ones you need and go from there. Spreadsheets, same thing. You can share your, desk, your, your documents with others and you can sync your desktop files to the cloud and vice versa, okay? All of them pretty much the same, and you'll see in just a little bit because I'm going to show you about them. Questions on Box. I started using this, it will be three years in the fall. They were just getting started, and they had a special. If you will, you know, sign up here, recommend it to your colleagues. We'll give you, uh, what was it, 500 gigs? 50, it was either 50 or 500 gigs for life, for free. 10 accounts, right there. Can't remember all the logins, but if I do. <laughs> SkyDrive, this is probably my least favorite. It's Microsoft, it's seven gigs. It's basically storage. You're not really going to be able to link to a lot of things. You're not gonna be able to use it in your courses or on your websites or anything. Uh, plus they kinda, when you, when you sign up for your SkyDrive, it kinda links to your machine and doesn't wanna let go. I'm not doing anything wrong on my machine. I just don't want people to link to it and not let go. Any of you use SkyDrive? How do you like it? Oh, I like it. Have you, you can actually add a Word document spreadsheet, PowerPoint, OneNote on the cloud. Okay. Um, you can add the web application. Okay. Have you used any of the others? Um, Google Drive or? Google Drive, yes, I do use Google okay. Drive as well. And you like, you like OneDrive? <laughs> I use for two different things. So. Sit right there. She uses them for two different things. Personal and work. Yeah, well, okay. You got me. Okay, here, I'll throw some candy at me no, then. No, that's okay. You're right, but I mean, you, you do want to have your personal accounts, your business accounts, and keep your stuff separate. So, I might get with you later and talk about SkyDrive. Okay. Not my favorite, not my favorite application. Now, once you've moved your documents up or created your documents in one of these cloud applications, what are you going to do? Well, you can insert it as a link. If you're creating a content page, if you're doing a quiz, anything you're doing, you can put a link in there to that document. You can also embed it inside your Canvas page. That can be a content page, it can be uh, a quiz, an assignment, it can be a daily announcement, it can be a discussion. Okay? All you're going to do is you're going to get the code and you're going to go to the HTML view and embed the code. You can publish this and it will come in as a frame. You will see everything just fine, but you won't see all the code. You won't be limited to scrolling in different things. Here's the big thing. When you are creating a course in Canvas, you're doing a, a, a content page. Oops, you need to edit that. What do you have to do? You gotta go to the page, you gotta hit edit, you gotta go in, make your changes, you gotta go save it, you gotta go back, and if you wanna get rid of it, well, you can't just take it out of the module, you have to go over and delete the page from Canvas, okay? And you've got your versioning, which is fine, but you're kinda limited on what you can do as far as formatting on the Canvas site. This will let you, as an instructor, if you are logged into your Google account and you're zipping through your course and somebody says, hey Craig, you misspelled your name on that page. Well now I'd have to go in, edit, do this, do this, do this. If I'm already lo logged into Google Drive, I can just type on the screen and the change is instantaneous. Okay. So that's the really big thing I like about it. Now, what you see here is an address, canvas.instructure.com, courses 844791. 
I'm fixing to show you how I've used these things and how you can use these things in Canvas. So if you'd like to go ahead and, and if you've got a device and you want to follow along, please do. That's the address. It's open to anybody. I'm going to leave it up so you can look at it. Okay? And I could do through the magic of video, just click there, but I've already done the magic and where did it go? Well, no, I didn't. How about that? I've got, I know what I did. I, I did it when I was doing the other one. Okay. As you can see, I've created my modules. Everybody, everybody uses modules, right? You know how to do that? Okay. You'll notice I've got the content page. I've also got a link to an external URL. Folks used to say, well, why do I want to put stuff on, on the cloud? What happens if the internet goes down? How would you respond to that? Well, if the internet goes down, you're not going to be here anyway. You know, I mean, you just kind of look at them like, okay. So what I've done is I've taken all the, the Google stuff in one module in my Dropbox. So I'm going to show you first of all, and you know how to do this, you share a link. Okay? All we've done is we've gone to the content page, we put our text, and then we go in and link it. And like that, it goes out and brings up my document. It's linked and it's showing you what it looks like in Google. Okay? Now, some of you are saying, okay, what's so special about that? It's Google Drive. Well, no, it's not, because I have gotten it where you can't do anything with it except view it or download it. Okay? And downloading it, look at this Microsoft Word, Open Document, Rich Tech, PDF. How many of you sit there and create content? and then convert it to a PDF, and now you've got two things up there. If you make a change, now you get, I'm lazy, folks, okay? I don't do that. So all I have to do is when I've got it in here, I give them the option to do what they want. You'll notice the formatting is a little bit nicer than you can do in, in the Canvas Rich Text Editor. So if you're looking at doing, using different fonts, colors, sizes, this is what you're going to do. Again, all they've got to do is go through and look at it. If I want to, I can turn the comments on, but as you can see, I did not give these people the permission to use comments. Okay? So all they can do is look at it, download it. If they want to download it as a Word document, they can do that, they can make changes to it. Now, See if I can get down to the page. But as you see, it took me out of the page. Now I can embed a document. The difference in this is, now you're going to have to scroll across to see things. It's not going to be up on the page. Same thing exists. You can read it, but what's missing? Pardon? Exactly. You can't print it out. You can't download it. You can't do anything with it. So if you're wanting people to see the content but not save it, this might be the option. Okay? The last one with Google, Drop, Google Doc is to come in and put it in as a URL. Okay? Again, you don't have the ability to download or to print or do any editing with this. And they can look at it all they want. And you can see it's actually published as a web page. So if you make any changes to the document, it's going to take five minutes for that change to show up on your student's page. And you probably not going to want to do that. You probably want to do it instantaneously. If you're doing something at night 
If you've got like an FAQ that you're going to change sporadically, you might want to publish this. Again, this is set as an external URL. How many of you have used the external URL capabilities in Canvas? Very simple. And in a minute, we'll show you how to actually go through and do these things, if you want. Those are documents. The next one is going to be your Google Slide. Again, you can put your link in, view the presentation, and it opens up a new tab and takes you to this. Okay? As you can see on this, now it's going to put up your slide bar over here so you can go through and look for a specific slide if you want. You do have the abilities to print this out as a PDF if you'd like to. You can download it as a presentation file if you'd like to. You can also present from this if you want to. Now, questions? Any of this? Okay. The next one is actually embedding it into your screen. And as you can see, it's too wide. You're going to have to try to go in and figure out what size screen they're looking at and different things. That's just too much for me to do. But that is a, a, a way you can embed this. They give you the code. As you can see, it just goes down like that, one slide at a time. The one I like is when it's published, the only problem is the publisher is blocked out inside of Canvas. Okay? So you cannot see it, but you can link to it at the top. Again, it brings you out into a presentation screen. The good thing about this, at the bottom, you can go full screen, you can choose the slides that you want, and by clicking this button, you can download it as a PowerPoint, as a PDF, you can print it, you can open up in the editor, or you can look at your speech notes, your speaker notes, okay? So your kids, your students can get all this information. They can get the content the way they want it. So if anybody, you know, if, if you know, I like to close out the, the PowerPoint portion so they can't change anything. I, I give it to them as a PDF. And you can block some of these features. Okay, any questions? Yes? Pardon? Okay. Where do you set the permissions for your Google? Where do you set the stuff, the permissions for your Google files? You do that inside of Google. Uh, when, you are, when you get done with it, there's a place where you can set the options to let it be downloaded or whatnot, and I'll show you that. We'll do that. Thank you for the question. So, the next one, spreadsheets. Okay, and again, the basic, put your link in there. Your student can click on it, and there's your spreadsheet. They can download it, they can print it, but they can't do anything else unless you give them the permission. If you give them permissions, they can do just about anything you want them to do. But you have to allow them to do that. As you, get, as you start getting into the spreadsheets and stuff, it does kind of limit what you can do because it is a spreadsheet and you can either link to it and give them permission. It does not publish as well. You can publish it as an HTML page. As you can see, it updates every five minutes. So you're better to actually try to put a link to it where it can go in and look at it. Also, if you're using uh, Google Forms where you can put in a, a content entry area and a spreadsheet with all the, the information, you can do that and embed that to look back out. Okay? I see the young lady shaking her head back there. You use Google Forms and you like that. See, I'll let you, I'll let you up here, you know, do this presentation. Do I? Hey, I know that. I'll let you do this presentation. You're doing good back there. So that's, that's going to be most of your Google stuff. Now, the big one. Videos. How do you put your videos 
on Google and let people use them. You just put a link like this. If, now, of course, if you, if you upload into your, Google, into your Canvas account, it's going to put a little preview screen up there. Of course, it's going to take up space on your, on your Canvas account. This one, you just link it like anything else. Again, it's going to pop up. If I can get to the right screen. Hey, YouTube, right? Close. Looks just like YouTube. You play it. You've got the ability to go down here and change your settings. High definition. Anything you want. But you're not going out to YouTube. It's coming off of Google. Go full screen with it. And there it is. That's just from the link. But you probably want to have that video thumbnail in there, don't you? Because that's kind of what everybody's used to seeing, a little thumbnail. OK. Guess what? We can do that, too. You can embed it. And look at that. It looks just like, again, YouTube or what you would have in your Canvas course. There it is. You can actually, if I quit knocking the screen over, you could actually come down here and go full screen with it. You can check everything you need just like you do in a regular YouTube video. Except, it's not in YouTube, it's not in Canvas. So if you move from one school district to another, one community college to another, you don't have to worry about taking huge files. You just take your Canvas course that has links to this. As well, you can put it in as an external URL. And once again, here it is. All you'd have to do is click on it. This is done inside the page. And I can go full screen with that as well. All I have to do is get the link from Google, put in my external URL, and save it. OK? Questions on that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, if you are linking, the question is, does Canvas have a way to auto start the videos? If you are linking to a YouTube video and you have the auto start feature set on that, yes. If not, no. The reason for that, I believe, and again, I don't work for Canvas and I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night, but if you've got six or eight videos embedded on a page and they're all trying to start up at the same time, you got a problem. It's going to bog down your system and probably lock up your computer. I don't like things. How many of you have Facebook? One or two of you? How do you like the videos now? You scroll down the page and the video just starts playing. I don't like that. Who, what, who said, who, you like it, who said that? Yeah, you, you, like, you like having the stuff. See, I don't, I don't like the auto start because again, we have some, we have some teachers It's that seat back there. There was a lady sitting there before you, and she spilled that water. I'm going to have them take that jug out because that's, that's, that's defective. But we have teachers in the K-12 area that will sit there and put five or six videos on one page. And they may not have the bandwidth already to have one video going. But when you try to get six of them going on one computer, and you've got 25 kids that are on different computers trying to get those six going. I'm thankful that they don't auto start. But is that a, is that a feature that you would like Canvas to, to offer is the ability to auto start a video? No, I, I, you want, would, that, would that be helpful? I can put in, I can put in a request to Canvas to, to look at that feature. And it may be something that, that they've already done, we just have not been made aware of. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll talk. I've, I've got a 
call with them on Wednesday morning, and I will, I will make that note to them. Thank you for that. Any other questions about Google Video, Google Drive? Yes, ma'am. Oh, so sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it off in ten seconds. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it off for you because you spill water. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna leave this up. I'm gonna leave this up as just a, a, a tool you can go back and look at things. You'll you'll have the ability to go in and look at how the modules were set up. Um, if you're interested, and of course you'll have my contact information. We can help you as well. But I I created this last night just so you could look at it, and this this was stuff specifically for this presentation. But thank you. Okay, next thing. Let's go to Dropbox. Again, Dropbox, one of the things that Google Drive does, if you don't use their formatted documents, they limit your bandwidth. So if you use a Word document, you can share that and, and link to that in Google Drive. But after so many downloads and so many views, it's going to lock it for a while. Same thing with PDF. In Dropbox, you can put your PDFs and they don't limit your use. So again, all you do is you copy, you put this in your public folder, you copy the public link, you go to the external URL, and here it is. Now, Wayne Easton said, Craig, I, I don't see where I can copy that or print that or use anything with it. Well. All you have to do is just move your mouse over the document, and now you can print it out, you can save it, you can go full screen with it, anything you need. Okay? Just like if you were looking, if you downloaded a PDF document or were looking at it on a regular website. Okay? Again, because of the syncing device on your, on your laptop or desktop, you pop this up, it's automatically linked up to the cloud. You put it in the public directory, find public link, copy that pop it in here. And again, if you want to go full screen with it, go here, you can zoom in, print it out. Now, the next one is video. I don't like sharing the video here because it has to process, but it can be done. It takes a while, when it comes up, it plays, it's fine. You'll notice it does not look at all like YouTube. It may confuse your users because they're saying, oh, no, I can't look at this. I'd have to learn something new. <laughs> it is helpful, though. And again, the problem you have with the Dropbox is your, is your space limitation. One of the things that I like, I use a product called iSpring Free where I can take my PowerPoint presentation, I can narrate it, just like I'm doing it for my kids, for my students, and I can convert it to a flash file. The good thing about this is it syncs up my audio and everything, but it's in flash. And Canvas does not process flash internally. It sends it out to a website. With this, as you can see, I've got it in a page URL. And if I scroll down, I can actually go full screen with it. Okay, so the students can sit there and see it as a full screen. Now, Margaret's back there saying, Craig, I've, I've seen that first slide. Show me the 30 second slide. How do you do that in PowerPoint? Well, you'd have to go through the, the presentation or you'd have to let them look at the, at the edited version. All I've got to do is come right here and now I go to the slide that I want to go to and it's nonlinear. You just jump around to whatever you need to do. Okay? It's coming off the Dropbox, so it's not eating up any of your storage capacity on Canvas. It gives you the ability as you move around because, look, I've been with the state for 30 years. I know people go from community college to community college for whatever reason. Okay? If they're in, if they're in Boonville, they, they, they move to Tupelo, they want to go to ICC instead of working at Northeast now. Or if they're over in Cahoma, they might work at Cahoma or, or Mississippi Delta. Southwest and Colin. We won't go there because I know y'all don't play together well. But this way you can, 
All you've got to do is take your, your links with you and go anywhere you want. If you go out of state, you can go anywhere you want. And if you were to go somewhere and use a different learning management system, because all of your content is not tied to one specific LMS or storage, because it's out here on the web, all you've got to do is link to it, and you're ready to go. You don't have to worry about moving files up anywhere or deleting files or anything. It's on your drive site or your Dropbox site or your box.com site. Okay? Any questions on that? Box. The video link. It lets you link the video, but as you can see, there's no preview. You've got to download it. Then you've got to play it on your machine. And you've got to hope that you've got the right uh, codex and the right player on your machine to play this if you download it. What I have found Box to be very good for is creating documents, not necessarily media playback or linking into the course, but I'm continuing to work with it. All these guys are continuing to update their systems. In November, I was working on a course on Google Drive, and you had to upload one file at a time. If you wanted to upload multiple files, you had to use Chrome, and you had to get a special add-on for Chrome. Christmas break, I was sitting there looking at some stuff, working on it, and I, I had a file, and I forgot, I can't, I can't just drag and drop on this, and lo and behold, you could. Just like that, you could now just drag and drop multiple files. You can't drag folders, but you can drag multiple files onto the desktop on, on Google Drive, and it uploads them, which made me happy because then I didn't have to do them one at a time. And because I've got, you know, 10 different accounts, I didn't have to worry about linking and unlinking everything. You can, on the box, do a PDF document and link to that. Again, that's going to be the same thing as you can do on Dropbox, and you can do the same thing with Google Drive, okay? So, that is what I have now. Would somebody, does anybody want to come up and see how to actually embed these things? How to do these things? Would anybody like to go to sleep? It's not that difficult to do, really. Who said that? Come here. Yeah, no, you said it. You said it. I'm going to show you. Let's see what I'm going to go to. That's okay. I am too. Okay. So what we're doing, I am logged in to my Google Drive account right here. Okay. Let me go back to uh, online courses. Okay. So here, here is my, all my courses that I'm working on right now. You see I've got documents right here. So I want to go in and, well, do I want to embed it or do I just want to put it up as a URL? She said she doesn't care, it's my choice. Okay, so what we do is we simply go in, we click on the document, okay? Now, if you're going to share a link, you simply go up and do share. Okay, now, you'll notice who can access this. And right now, I say anybody who has the link can view it. But click on change, please. Now, right here where it says access, anyone, this says you can view it. If I want to, I can give them the ability to comment on it or edit it. 
from right here, okay? Simple as that. So what do you want to do with it? You just want them to be able to view it, right? Yeah. Still okay, there. so click on view. Okay, and now we do save. Now we copy this link. This is the link that we're going to put into our, into our course. So what are we going to do? Okay, you can do that or you can do control C. Okay, so now we've got this. Now what we're going to do, let me go back to the other. Right here. Do I? No, no you don't. The, the comment was you have to do Chrome with Canvas. No, you don't. You can use Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, any of those. It is not just limited to Chrome. Just wanted to make sure you knew that. Okay, so now we're going to go in here to our modules, and we're just going to add content. Okay? Now, you're going to put this in a, in a content page, right, and just say click here to do this. So go ahead, create a page or an assignment. It does not matter okay. because this, this is just going to go in. You're going to link to it. Okay. No, you, you're going to create a new one. Oh, I'm sorry. Come down. No, 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 just, just scroll down. You don't do Canvas? I do Canvas, but I, don't. I hadn't learned the video stuff. Okay, there's new page. Right. So now, put a page, put a name in. And add your item. Okay, now, click on that page and open it. No, click on the, click on the link. One, one click. There you go. Go in and, and edit your page. Now, no, no. Now you go in and type something. Blah, blah, blah. Nope. Well, I thought I clicked it. My bad. Scroll up. I told you I don't do touch pads. Okay. Now, highlight that. Go to your link. Yeah. Okay. Click on that. Uh, now paste. paste your link in. This is too cool, right? Okay. Save it. Now you see how much trouble this is right here to go in and, and, and put. Now click on the link. And like magic, there it is. Oh, this is too nice. Okay. You, you did not have to, to do, you just link to it. Now, if you were going in to edit this thing, mm -hmm. okay, let me have a seat one second, please. I'm going to let you do it in a minute, but no, rather than try to, no, 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 no. We're going to let you do this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to publish it to the web, mm -hmm. and now I've got my, link right there, mm -hmm. which is where I get my link when I'm going to publish, okay? You put this in your external URL and it's there. This is the code where you get the embed code to put into a content page. Go back and do this. Still got that one. Okay. So I'm going to come back down here. I'm going to go to my modules. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm just going to go right here. We've got a link here. No, I'm not either. No, I'm not either. Go to my module. Add content. Okay. Add an external URL. Okay. I'm going to post this. And spelling does not count <laughs> during presentations, okay? Does not work. Now, at this point, you will see I can look at this document, mm -hmm. but I can't do anything with it. 
if I am the teacher and I am logged in over here, mm -hmm. see if I can split screen this. I need to come visit you. Okay, so now I've got this. There we go. So here's my, this is my Canvas course. This is my Google, mm -hmm. Google Drive. If I want to change, okay, as I am doing it, on the fly, it's changing it. If I was logged in on Firefox, I could just go right into Firefox and change it. Let's, uh, just to show you how that works, real quickly. This isn't my computer, so no, I don't. But that's a good question. Uh, if you would like to share yours, I will put your login in here and let you have it. No, 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 no. I thought it was your computer. No, no. Now, I'm going to go here. And again, I'm logged into my Google Drive account right now. So if I go into, and I'm in my course, and go down to modules, and I'm looking at witty page. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at it and I realize, oh wait a minute, that should not be what it is. And again, I am inside Canvas. I am not inside Google Drive. I can edit my Google, doc, my Google Drive document from inside of Canvas. Through Firefox. Or Chrome. Okay. Or, all you have to do is you have to be logged into your Google account. Okay? Did you see what I'm doing? I'm going to change this and bold it. I am inside my Canvas account here. I am not in Google Drive. Okay? But it is synced back up to my Google Drive. It is synced back down to my computer. That's the cool thing about this. Okay? Uh, if I want to get rid of this, it's gone. Have a seat. Okay, you've got a question. Okay. Several different Google, I mean, Canvas sections. Yes. Will it automatically change it automatically within all sections? The question is if you have a frequently asked questions page and it is linked in several different courses, would it be changed in every course? Yes, it would. So it's, it's create once, use many times, and edit many times. Yes, ma'am. When you say, the question is you want to use some of this content in your, in your course in another semester. If you are using the Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever, all you have to do is in your new course, link to it. If you have, if you have it, if you have your Canvas course, you can transfer that and everything's going to stay the same. Yes. Yes. No, none whatsoever. I mean, the reason that I've really been trying to use Google Drive is, or just external, some cloud stuff. I try to create my course using the modules in an outline form in a Word document. So now I know what modules I'm going to do when I start building a course. Then I go in and start putting what kind of content do I want. Is it a content page? Is it a video? Is it an assignment? Whatever. And then I go in and put my content. If I, and by using Google Drive or a cloud facility, all I've got to have is a link now. I don't have to worry about copying stuff. A lot of people in K-12, a lot of school districts in K-12, want to have a hard copy documentation. It is difficult to do that if you have created something inside 
of a learning management system because now you're having to cut and paste and do something in a Word document. If you've already created a Word document, you've got your outline and everything, it's identical to what you've got online. They can just click on the link and go to it without having to be in the system. Does that answer your question? Now, you had a comment. You were going to make a comment about something? Well, hey, look, I don't, I don't, I don't own the, the, the patent. I don't know all the information in the world. Wayne Easton will tell you that I do, but he lies a lot. Yes, ma'am. So, so if you were editing a document and students were actually viewing it right then, they would see you making those changes. Yes, ma'am. Do, do you ever have students freak out because of that? And, oh, my God, I posted on the questions and it started changing. Oh, no, I'm perfect. I never have to edit things. <laughs> Okay. No, actually, actually, I try to make my changes in the evenings so that, that, that I, don't, I don't bother them. But if, if somebody came up and said, you misspelled this, or if I've got two or three students that say, what does this mean? How do you do this? I'm not going to sit there and wait for all of them to do it. I'm just going to change it right then and there to try to head off the, the questions. And that's a good thing about, again, to be able to sit there and that you're inside Canvas, okay? You're inside your Canvas course, and you're changing something. You're changing a PowerPoint slide. You're changing your spreadsheet or a Word document, and it's showing up right here. For me, that's just, that's just I like that. Yes, ma'am. No, this is when you have it as, well, you can do it if it's embedded, or you can do it as if it is if it is as an external URL. You, you linked out to it and it goes into Google Drive. So you are in Google Drive but you've gone out of it. This way it's, it's in as an external URL. It shows up inside of Canvas. It's not going to take you out anywhere. Embed or, or the I like the URL because Embedding sometimes does not fit in the page, and it throws up uh, another panel on the side so you can check and see where you are, which is a pain. That is my preference. That does not make it right or wrong. It just makes it Craig. But thank you for that question. Questions, comments, thoughts? Yes, ma'am. You can, you can set that. It is up in the settings. Dawn, if you will, please. Um, no, 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 no. You go ahead and go full screen. Double, uh, maximize that screen, please. Okay. Sorry about that. Let me go back to it. See if it, I think you closed it. Probably. No, you didn't. Okay, just maximize that, please. Sorry about that. That's okay. Go to settings. Okay, and now when you've got your web services down here, this is where you're going you're gonna to make your changes. Come on, scroll on down a little bit. That's okay. And you see there's your, there's your Google Drive. All you're going to do, go ahead and click on that. And it's, it's already registered, so it's, it's there. But all you have to do is, is go to your settings and link it up to your Google Drive account. And does that have to be done? It does not have to be done. No, that's, that's more if they're going to be uploading files to you. You don't, have to, you don't have to do it if you're just linking out to it. Because, again, if you are sharing a document that I've got, and I share it and you've got the link, it's not on your Google Drive account. You've got the link to my account, and that's all you need. But, again, you can share your content where people can view it. They can get the link to where they want to, where they want to embed it, or if they want to publish it, or, or whatever they'd like to do with it, just because you share it with them. Now, where do you set where they can only download it as a PDF? Okay, it's a good question. What we're going to do is we're going to go to. Um, you need that five box. Is that where it is? That's where you had most of it. No, it's going to be in. It's, I got it in Chrome. That's right. Chrome. That's okay. That's all right. Um, go to your Google Drive, using Google Drive right there, yeah. Go under File, and you see, let's see, am I logged in there? I thought you were. I'm not logged in there. Oh, here. 
yeah, you gotta sign in. It doesn't say hey you. There you go. No, you're fine. You're fine. Thirty-seven cents to anybody who can figure out my password. You go to file, and where are my settings? No. Okay, you got me. Go to tools. I don't think it's under tools. No, it's it's um. That's your preferences here. Yeah. I will have to, you stop me. <laughs> I have been bested, I bow down. I will find, that, find out where it is and get it back to you if that's okay. I apologize for, I'm so embarrassed. Thank you for that question. Any other questions on that? Yes, ma'am. Personal financial stuff, I wouldn't put it up there. That's me. Student grades are on the, right? <laughs> student grades are on the cloud. It, it, it's in the cloud through, through Canvas. But if you've got a hard copy of your, of your stuff, you know, I just don't. You, you had a comment. Miss, I have five accounts. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, please. I'm, I, if, Right. Security is. People can hack anything. You know, and you know when you go to when you go to Walmart or something, and you and you swipe your card, it's going over the same phone lines as the internet. So it's it's fair game. I use it primarily. Well, I won't say primarily. I use it for documents that I'm putting in a course, media, files like that. I don't put any of my personal stuff in the cloud. I have a jump drive for that. And again, the reason, you know, using the stuff on, on, on Drive or OneBox, OneDrive or, or Dropbox or Box is because it's also synced up on my computer. So if something happens to the web, I've still got the content here. And because it syncs up every time I make a change one place or the other, I've got the latest versions. So it doesn't, it doesn't concern me. But I, I would not recommend putting personal financial or just personal information up there unless you just got a sense of humor. <laughs> Student information is, is is in the cloud already through your learning management system. It is encrypted and it is protected. But I wouldn't put my own stuff up there. That's just me, but that's a good question, thank you. Questions, thoughts, comments? What else do we need to see? You want to see how to do videos? How to embed your videos? Okay. What we're going to do is we will go to my drive. There we go. I'm gonna go to my videos. And here's how to sort your grade book. So I'm gonna right click on this. I'm going to do share. I am going to, anybody with the link can view this. So I'm going to copy that link. Hey, that's my job. I'm the big meanie. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into Canvas. Let's go to the modules, please.
Okay. Okay, so now we go to our modules. Uh, this is tough, folks, okay? Pay real close attention. Okay. There will be a test on this later. And we're going to go to the content. We're going to add. And we're going to go to an external URL. Okay, we add now paste the, paste the link in. Give it a title. Okay, now add it. And now click on the link, please. And what do you think about that? That's awesome. There it is. Okay, if you want to embed it, you just take the embed code and you put it into your content page. Mm -hmm. Okay, how hard is that to do? Is this something you can use that you can see where it can help you with your Canvas courses? I've got two courses I've just completed. One's on building a social, social media network, which I'm going to talk about tomorrow, and one on Google Drive, which I'm talking about now. How big are your courses, your course shells, when you get done with them, building them in Canvas? Three, four hundred megs? Bigger? What if I told you I can get it down to under a meg and I can have videos, flash files, really, truly rich formatted text files, PDF documents, all less than a meg that you can mail that shell to anybody else that wants to use it. That's what your Google Drive does. So when you have to go in at the end of a semester break, Christmas breaks, 4th of July, all you got to do is export that one one meg file down to a jump drive and put it in your pocket and go anywhere else in the world, create your Canvas course fresh again, and everything's still exactly like it was. You don't have to worry about uploading any files. You don't have to remember which file you have and have not uploaded. It's already there and good to go. Okay? Any questions? How late does this thing go? What time? 11.15? You have any questions, comments? Anything else you want to see? Chris? For this session? For this one? Blame me. <laughs> I, was, I was working on the proposal, and it was probably late one night, and I had, had not, not had enough coffee or had too much coffee. I'm sorry. Hopefully, hopefully it, it was something that, that benefited you. Yes, sir. I have looked at it. Some of the things I'm trying to work on are primarily for K-12 because they are limited on, on what they can reach out to. But we'll talk about it. You can give me some information about it. And I, again, I'm, my primary focus is K-12. Canvas, but I also work with the community colleges, and I've worked with workforce before, and so anything, that's how I actually got into doing what I do more or less, is I had business and industry asking me, how can we do something without having to do the, the millions of dollars like our corporate headquarters spends? And that's how I've been able to find some of these, these options. Um, but thank you for that question. Any other, any other questions or comments? I'll be around the rest of the day if you have any questions. Uh, love to sit down and talk to you. Thank you for your time. You've been a great audience. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.